Dr. Doolittle could talk to animals, but what about cars? That's this week on Motoring 2003. SN's Motoring 2003 is brought to you by Quaker State Motor Oil, oils fine-tuned for different engines, and Midas, Total Car Care, we do that. You know, whether it's email or the traditional mailbox, we're all inundated daily with chances of a lifetime opportunities if we join a club or association, and then we'll receive outstanding gifts. Yeah, right, and of course we toss them. And I'm not sure about you, but I'm not a club kind of guy. Although, I have to admit, I've been a long-time member of a Canadian association that's been around since 1913. And of course, I'm talking about the Canadian Automobile Association. Well, this week, we thought we'd take a few minutes and go behind the scenes of the CAA, Canada's Good Samaritan. What kind of vehicle is it? You're making models? And where is this vehicle located right now? Okay, we'll send someone out to assist you if you just want to keep a watch for the driver to arrive. Thank you very much for choosing CA and have a great day. Dr. Doolittle is the founder of CAA and he has done some amazing things in the past to bring CAA to where it is now. Dr. Doolittle traveled along the Trans-Canada checking out the, the conditions of the roads and building a case for changes in highway funding and that sort of thing for road improvements. CAA Central Ontario is the largest auto club in Canada. We had 27 members in 1903 when it started. Now in Central Ontario we have over 1 million members in this area and over 4 million members nationally. CAA was extremely busy this winter with the cold weather we've been having. Major problems reported by members were basically their batteries were dead and as a result things were very busy here. We had a record day of over 9,000 calls in one day. We had an extremely cold uh, January and I think it was the first week of January uh, right well, we had about three weeks consecutive whereby we were accepting over seven eight thousand calls a day uh, whereas again last January you probably had three thousand thirty five hundred call days and we had up to six seven thousand calls a day uh, this January. There is no typical call it could be anything from a tire change to a boost to a lockout to somebody stuck in a snowbank or uh, disabled. Battery Assist Program is a fairly new program we've started here. Um, the main components of it is um, if a member's car battery dies, we'll either go boost them or replace their battery for a discounted price, um, which has been great this winter with the cold that uh, members have been experiencing a lot of dead batteries. It's come in handy for them. Thank you for calling CAA. Daryl speaking. How may I help you? Upon breakdown, a member would contact our call center, provide us with their membership number, their location. We'd confirm if there was a telephone number to call them back at. We got the type of car uh, that, that they're driving that needs uh, uh, service. The color of your vehicle, please. What we're after is a Jeep Liberty that has a no start or there's a computer problem with it. We'd find out what type of service they need, whether it be a uh, towing service or a battery uh, or a gasoline call or a lockout. And then we'd uh, contact one of our drivers and they'd be right out to them as soon as possible, within 30 minutes, hopefully. Okay, where would you like to take it to? The best part of this job is knowing that you're going to a call and you're going to be helping somebody. And there's nothing probably more rewarding than showing up and somebody's standing there and they're so happy to see you and you're, you're able to help them in their need of, of getting their car either fixed on the scene, um, boosted mobile, or we take them to the closest garage or whatever garage they would uh, feel most comfortable having their car fixed at. And, you know, with the weather conditions, the colder it is, 
the faster they want to get into a warm vehicle and, and get to their destination. Pretty well everybody has a story to tell you about a mini back when. If the only tool you've got is a hammer, then every problem looks like a nail. More later on Kenzie's Corner. You know, you can hardly describe the... Where's that thing going? The fly here, sorry, okay. Hell. <laughs> Flew into my mouth. Right, okay, okay. You know, Lexus can lay legitimate claim to having invented an off-road vehicle that was never really intended to be used off-road. That was, of course, the RX 300, a vehicle that accounted for about 40% of Lexus sales, making it some pretty big shoes to fill. This week on Test Drive, we're in Vancouver to test its replacement. This is the all-new RX 330. While the RX300 was an unquestionable hit, it had two minor complaints when it came to the engine. It was thirsty and the power marginal. The RX330 addresses these two complaints very effectively. The revised 3.3 litre V6 engine now produces 230 horsepower and 242 pound-feet of torque, which is enough to deliver a lively feel across the board. Adding variable valve timing with intelligence then spreads the power out over an even broader range, which brings much better flexibility. Factor in the new 5-speed automatic transmission, and the RX330 runs from rest to 100 km an hour in 8 seconds, whilst managing to improve fuel economy. Now talk about having your cake and eating it too. Slip behind the wheel of the RX330 and you're not going to be disappointed because it's typically Lexus, meaning understated elegance. Even in this base model, a very nice set of electroluminescent gauges, a six-pack CD player, which really does pump out superior sound, and a cassette deck, which is a departure from the norm. You also get a decent climate control system. However, throw a few bucks at this vehicle, and well, you can load it up with everything up to and including a reverse backup camera, which shows up on the optional nav system screen, as well as a Mark Levinson stereo that really is the cat's meow. Now, there's one thing that I do like about this vehicle. If your wife drives it, she's got a spot for a purse. For me, my double-double goes right there. The newfound power is relayed to the road through a full-time all-wheel drive system. Under normal circumstances, it splits the power evenly. Should the wheels begin to slip, the center differential redirects the power to the front or rear wheels as required. Beyond that, the anti-lock brakes, which bring strong fade-free stops, doubles as a traction control system. Simply, should one of the left wheels spin, the brake is applied, which forces the power to the right wheel and vice versa. Not only is it effective, it is completely seamless and transparent to the driver. Talk safety and you expect a Lexus to get the lot, and the RX330 does for the most part. His and hers front airbags, a knee bolster airbag down here which prevents the driver from kneecapping himself on all the hardware, side seat mounted airbags and drop down air curtains. Now it's the latter, the drop down air curtains that I take issue with. They only deploy in a T-bone type incident. In other words, they do not deploy when you roll over. Now, given that SUVs are more predisposed to rolling over than your average car, I think that is a mistake. Lexus needs to employ some sort of rollover detector that would deploy the side curtains to stop the stuff from crashing in through the glass or your head crashing out. The anti-lock system also adds a vehicle stability control system. Now, should it detect a wayward trend, it backs off the electronic throttle and brakes the appropriate wheel to direct the RX back onto the straight and narrow. The electronic stabilization is backed up by a stronger body and a four-inch stretch in the wheelbase. The combined effects not only bring a bigger footprint and planted feel, it gives the strut base suspension a good place to hang its hat. 
You know, if you are contemplating buying an RX330, going with the sport package is a good idea. As it stands, the base suspension allows quite a lot of body roll. Going with a sport pack brings a much better air suspension. It firms up the handling without sacrificing the ride. In other words, it puts the icing on an already nice cake. The Sport Package also adds some other cool stuff, including a manual mode for the automatic transmission, a better looking set of 18 inch wheels, and it upgrades the lighting to a set of high intensity discharge headlamps. Not only is the light brighter, the adaptive front lighting system, as it's called, swivels the headlights by a small amount and in the same direction in which the steering is turned, which improves nighttime visibility even more. You know, the rework of the RX300 is very much more evolutionary than it is revolutionary, but that's not a bad thing. You do get more power, more space, more luxury, and a better all-wheel drive system. In fact, you get more of everything that made the RX300 the number one seller in this category. And it's safe to say that the RX330 is going to continue the trend. Midas tip of the week concerns your tires. We're always talking about the importance of monthly tire pressure checks and regular checks of the remaining tread depth on your tires. But you should also have the tires checked for cuts and cracks. Cracks occur, exposure to the sunlight, and normal aging. Now a tire that's extensively cracked is not going to have a lot of grip in the rain or snow and it's in danger of coming apart during high speed, high temperature driving. This tire has the beginnings of cracking in this area right here and a slight cut right here that's a reason to replace one or all of the tires that show the cracking. You don't want to leave it and find out the hard way when the tire disintegrates. That's your Midas tip of the week. This particular Mini Miner is a 1975 uh, with a 1,000 cc uh, engine and a four cylinder, of course. I guess if I was to describe this, this uh, Mini to someone that couldn't possibly imagine what it was, it, uh, I just tell them that it's a cut off Mini Miner cut off 30 inches, the front, the door's taken off, and the front seat's taken out, pulled together, welded back up. And uh, I also explain mostly to people, and they're looking at you kind of funny, that the wheelbase on it is uh, eight inches shorter than a golf cart. Everybody that, that has them, or has had them, uh, you know, they think this one's quite unique, I guess, but. The new Minis from BMW, I was very, very impressed. Uh, I like the horsepower, I like the design, the bigger wheels. The old ones, uh, like this one that I have, because of the smaller wheels, they're very, very sensitive because you don't need to turn the wheels on these little ones very much and you could be possibly upside down in the ditch someplace. The new ones are nice, there's no doubt about that, but my compassion basically is, is still with the old ones. This is the 2003 Chevy Silverado SS. Six liter V8, 345 horsepower, $54,000. The price of gas, irrelevant. And you can bet Bill will be checking this out later. And speaking of our man in the Quaker State garages, we all know when it comes to pickups, Bill is strictly a General Motors domestic kind of guy. Well, Bill is going to be doing a long-term test on a pickup truck. 
It's got to be domestic, right? You're not going to believe this. Brad's trying to insinuate that I'm a redneck, but you know something? My very first vehicle, four-wheeled vehicle that is, was a pickup truck. Now, when I first got my driver's license, I had motorcycles, and I didn't really want to hear about cars and trucks, but you know, winter came along and I was in big trouble. My dad gave me my first vehicle, and that was a 66 GMC pickup truck. He took off to Florida for the winter, and uh, I kind of fell in love with pickup trucks after that. My dad had always had them when I was a kid, and I'll tell you, once you've had a pickup truck, you don't want to be without them. They are the ultimate utility vehicle. Now, you've seen my blue GM pickup on the show many times. It's got a lot of kilometers on it, but it runs great. I absolutely love this truck, but I'll tell you, with a regular cab pickup truck, you've really got to learn to travel light. You don't have a whole lot of cab room. I've always wondered what it would be like to have an extended cab pickup. Well, I'm going to have a Toyota Tundra access cab, extended cab pickup with a six foot box, and that's going to be a long term tester on the show for the next six months. So I'll update update you on it a little bit later. Now this truck has got the iForce V8 245 horsepower and 315 foot-pounds of torque. It's a 4.7 liter double overhead cam 32 valve V8. Lots of motor and I'll tell you a little bit more about it later. Now this week on the show I want to uh, update you on some email that we've got here, a follow-up more or less about a wiper problem. Now I talked about a, a wiper problem with GM vehicles. I want to take that part out of my truck and show you exactly what it is. The, our viewer wrote in and he said two months ago you did a segment about wiper motors on GM vehicles. Uh, my mother-in-law's 96 transport van seems to have the similar problem to the one you mentioned. At random intervals the wipers do not work. I can't remember what part you mentioned. So we'll go under the hood. I'm going to pull that part out and actually show it to you. The part that often fails and stops these GM wiper motors is a little circuit board located right underneath this cover. Now how do you confirm if you've got this problem? Well with the key on and the wipers turned on, if you just come out under the hood and give it a little tap, in most cases you'll find that the wiper motor will jump to life and start running. And quite often it will run for quite a while until the next time it, it fails. Now in order to get this part out you just remove that little clip that secures the wiring harness, lift up on that tab and pop off the wiring harness. I've already removed one of the screws from this cover. There's three screws in total and two of them can just be loosened and one removed and then pop that cover off. There's the circuit board that I'm talking about right there and it just snaps into the wiper motor. You can unclip it and pop it right out and there's the part right there. That's the board you're going to replace. Now this is about a $60 part and available separately. You don't have to buy the whole wiper motor to get this. You can actually see the problem that this one has. There's a couple of spring-loaded contacts right here and you can see that there's a copper contact on this one that's in good shape and this one's flat spotted and almost completely worn off. So eventually this one's going to quit. And those two little spring-loaded contacts work against a couple of slip rings over here. This is one of the first things you want to check if your GM wiper motor is not functioning. It may be as simple as just replacing this circuit board. Till next week, I'm Bill Gardner for Motoring 2003. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. It happens to be a holiday weekend here in Ontario. Hey, my parents moved here. What can I say? And the Ontario Provincial Police is conducting a massive safety blitz this weekend. And of course, the only tool they have is a radar gun. So the only people they're catching are speeders. Now, they know the public got a bit of a problem with just focusing on speeders. So they love to talk about the other guys they catch, the little anecdotes that they love to talk about on the radio. My favorite. Well, he was a guy who was tailgating a marked cruiser, flashing his high beams. The cruiser pulls over. The guy rockets off into the middle distance. Cop pulls him over. His excuse? He had to get to court on time for his case. Otherwise, his temporary license suspension was going to become permanent. Well, I got one word for you, buddy. Taxi. How about the young kid that was going 180 kilometers an hour? Police pulled him over, and his excuse was, well, the law says I have to keep the passing lane open for faster traffic. Now, one word for you, buddy. Taxi. Now, the problem with these fishing holes, even the police call them that, is it's like the, the Pacific Coast fishermen. When they're scooping for tuna, they catch as many dolphins as they do tuna. Most of the people they're catching, they're not necessarily bad drivers. They're just normal people trying to get home from the cottage. But if you get 
caught for let's say 125 k that really is only 5k over the real speed limit even the policeman will tell you that but you get charged for 25 over that's points and money now if you're 25 over a 40k zone in a school zone for example that's serious but it's the same fine as 25 over on a freeway that doesn't make any sense another thing that bugs me about this blitz you see these pixel board signs over the highways i'm sure every province has some of them they talk about wear your seatbelt. They talk about watch out for motorcyclists and don't drive drunk. Don't use your cell phone. What's the only thing they really have to tell you? Move over. Drive right. Right lane only. You and the blue tempo. That means you. And what's the only thing they don't talk about? Driving right. Even the statistics the OPP comes out with on this blitz, they talk about the number of speeders, the number of drunks, the number of seatbelts, the number of unsafe cars. How many people did they pull over for driving in the left lane? None. Zero. It's the only thing you have to do to be safe on a highway. It's the only thing they don't charge you for. Now, I know I've gone on and on about the gym only lane, driving the right lane only, but I got to keep doing it until somebody does something about it. Now, I have to confess, it really should be called the Jeff only lane because I stole that line from a friend of mine named Jeff. Okay. Now, he just told me a few minutes ago his dad was driving in the Jeff only lane at about a buck twenty-five. The only car on the road was at night policeman pulled him over and said, you know, if you're going to be going that fast, we wouldn't have pulled you over, except you should be a couple of lanes over. So even the cops don't get it. Well, by the way, that safety blitz, it's over at 10 o'clock tonight. So boys, in a couple of hours, stand on it. I'm Jim Kenzie. We're all out of time for this week, but before we go, we get a lot of email from our viewers who get a little frustrated when our time slot is moved. Well, I can assure you that TSN goes out of its way to maintain our spot, but hey, that's the nature of the business. But we do list all our program times as well as what's on the show on our webpage. So why don't you check out motoringtv.com or click in tsn.ca. Well, that's it for this week. We'll see you next time out as we continue to bring you more stories about cars and the people who drive them. We've heard from a lot of our customers that they've invested a lot in their car, they like their car, but they want to protect the seats from uh, the fur and smell that might come with the dog being in the car. TSN's Motoring 2003 has been brought to you by Quaker State Motor Oil, oils fine-tuned for different engines, and Midas, Total Car Care, we do that.